Hey everyone, and welcome to Rise Above It, the official podcast of the Rise business community, where we talk about goals, failures, success, and how to navigate the pursuit of dreams. You're on with your host, Jeff Noth. Hey, hey. And myself, Stu Campbell. Thank you for joining us. Our next guest is John Van Dusen Edwards, the founder of the Food is Free Project, a wildly popular online community advocating the sustainable growing and giving away of food for one's community. John started Food is Free with a group of friends in Austin, Texas, helping popularize practices like wicking garden beds for better growing in hot climates, and has since moved with his now wife to Asheville, North Carolina, where he continues to advocate for community-driven growing practices, self-care, and generally enlightened living. John, thanks for joining us on Rise Above It. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate your time. Uh, we're all busy, and you said you are getting ready to start your garden and stuff. So uh, for the audience out there, we connected a few years back when Rise was a garden design app, actually, struggling to get off the ground. Tell us about Food is Free Project and how it took off. Was it just the timing? Was it marketing? How did you grow to a movement with now almost 400,000 followers on Facebook and loads of local chapters throughout the world? Um, you know, it's uh, looking back on it, it's a lot easier to kind of see, I guess, you know, see how things have progressed. Um, initially, I think I, uh, you know, I, I really just had a, you know, a small backyard garden. I was, you know, actually a friend gifted me some seeds and an air, uh, organic gardening book. And um, I got together with another friend and decided to start the seeds and, you know, give it a go. And I failed miserably and I'll, you know, had some fun. And, uh, you know, I started to just fall in love with getting my hands in the soil. But then I, I came across an interesting perspective that was um, from a book I was reading. It was saying like, as gardeners, we almost have a responsibility to plant our gardens in the front yard. Um, and that really just kind of, uh, struck a chord with me. So I tried it and cause we had a big six foot privacy fence. So, um, my backyard garden, I wasn't, you know, no one saw it. I wasn't seeing anyone. So I just planted a small four by four garden out front. And before I knew it, um, on my street in Austin, Texas, you know, people would be walking by strolling by with their dog or whatnot. And, you know, people would comment about the garden while I was out there working, or sometimes they would you know, um, you know, ask questions or talk about what they're growing. And, um, you know, it, it, nothing really, you know, not not much was really happening in a big scheme, you know, up front. But uh, one lady, I, I'll never forget her. She, you know, a few months into the garden, she told me she, she was, you know, walking her dog and she stopped and said, you know, just walking by your garden uh, and seeing it grow has inspired me to start my own garden. And now I've got all my friends growing their own broccoli. And, uh, you know, that just really like, I just, I felt like a light bulb went off. Like, wow, like you don't even, you know, you, you never know who you might inspire if you just do something out in a place where people might see it. Um, and meanwhile, you start to connect with neighbors and, you know, you have more interactions and, you know, you're generating smiles and waves. And um, it's, so that just, that was like kind of that seed. Um, from there, I, I kind of just had this, uh, I was walking home from the coffee shop one day and I just started like looking at everyone's front yards and imagining what it would look like if like there were gardens in everyone's yard. And, uh, it really felt, I don't know, kind of like, I just felt like this, uh, a great, uh, just a deep inspiration, uh, to just try to do something, um, to make that happen. And I, I was thinking like, what would it be like to live on a block if everyone had a front yard garden? And, you know, like what, what, how would it be possible? What might, that, what might that, you know, um, inspire in other forms of collaboration? Um, Cause I do feel like food is something that we all have in common. Um, I had a sales background selling insurance door to door for a few years. And so my mind and kind of from sales was thinking like, okay, well, if you can eliminate the reasons people don't garden, then maybe that'll make it that much more accessible to actually make it happen and, 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 and give it a shot. Um, so I was thinking, you know, people either say they can't afford it or they uh, think they have a black thumb or in Texas, like with the summer heat and the drought, it's just, you know, that's a constant issue is yeah. just how to, how to keep things alive. 
Um, so, so basically I came across these wicking bed gardens online. I was looking up like drought tolerant gardening and, um, that seemed like, okay, well, if we can use these wicking beds, that might help eliminate the people who think they have a black thumb or who, you know, don't have the time to water. Um, mm -hmm. and then figuring out, okay, how can we, how can we get past the cost barrier? Um, you know, my, I, you know, started looking around at like what's being thrown away. You know, I saw there was a, a, a construction kind of project happening of some apartments nearby that had a trash, a dumpster full of all this lumber in it. And I was like, what, you know, and, um, and then meanwhile, you know, just trying to put the pieces together, I, you know, started to realize that there's a lot of resources for building gardens that might well be around uh, in our existing communities that are getting thrown away. I saw a post on our local neighborhood listserv about, um, you know, free soil if you come pick it up. So went and picked it up and uh, started gathering up some like wooden pallets and old political signs that uh, were used for campaign elections. And, um, and also, I guess for the, for the wick bed, we also used uh we also used um, old, I guess they were old billboard liners, like the billboard material. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically it was kind of like, okay, uh, if we could, you know, find basically things that were going to get thrown away, use those to build gardens, start figuring out ways to get some soil, um, you know, use this wicking bed idea. All of a sudden it, you know, there aren't that many more obstacles to making it happen. Um, so my roommate and good friend and bandmate at the time, Jonathan Horseman and I, we we made up these flyers and put them up and down the block. And um, I was thinking, you know, like, well, if we can make it a special thing that's kind of, uh, you know, kind of gets some gives gives people a spark to take action quicker, maybe you know that'll kind of get things happening. So we said, like, the first on the flyer, it said, like we are going to offer these free wicking bed gardens. The first 10 people to return the bottom of the slip into our mailbox will receive a free garden. Uh, if, if you're willing to host it in your front yard. Um, yes. so it, it seemed a little crazy and I had been door to door. I had been door to door in the past for my sales job. And so I was, you know, I went and knocked on the doors and, uh, gave out these flyers. And, um, even by the time I was, still passing out the flyers at the end of the block i saw someone like speed walking back to my house to like put their flyer in my mailbox um <laughs> so that was kind of like a spark like okay this might this might <laughs> this might work you know mm -hmm. um and so that was kind of just like the beginnings of it we we hosted a potluck kind of community event sharing the idea with with friends and neighbors around town uh, at a local community space and so we had all we had over 100 people show up to that. And pe there was just a lot of interest, a lot of people who all wanted to host gardens all over town. Um, but it was kind of like, how can we figure out a way to do this in a way that's manageable, that we can prove the model and upscale the idea? So um, so we kind of used the block I was living on as a pilot model and say, like, OK, if we can if we can learn our learn what works, learn what's not working, um, you know, kind of share our journey and our experience uh, with people, maybe they can learn from it. And, you know, if you can learn from other people's mistakes, then uh, it's a higher chance that people will have success growing their own food and, and not give up thinking they have a black thumb. Um, so that's kind of how like the initial thing kind of got started. And we just, we just dove right in and um, we, we hosted work days on our, um, at our property, basically one work day, we would pre-build, um, pre-build these wicking bed boxes out of wooden pallets and the political signs. And, and so we, we built 10 gardens that first work day and we had a lot of people show up. Like it just, it was really resonating with folks and it was really exciting to see people coming together to really bring the vision to life. And, um, so then the following uh, weekend we uh, we had already gotten our 10 responses of the by the neighbors so those were the first 10 people that got the gardens and we installed those and filled them with soil and um, and you know basically within five we, we we kind of alternated build weeks with with planting weeks and we there were only five total work days um, and by the end of the fifth work each each work day we'd end with a little potluck meal and 
um, it was really, you know, it was really, we were all having a great time while doing it. And by the end of the five weeks, um, 19 out of the 30 houses on, on our street all hosted a little front yard waking bed garden. So That's huge. <laughs> That's awesome. it was pretty crazy. Oh. <laughs> it was really like, it was unbelievable. I was just like blown away seeing it actually happen because it, it was just this idea, you know, this like, you know, it, it, something, it's one thing to see as something in your mind, but it's another thing to, for it to really like, you know, be in the physical world when it was once just a thought. Um, yeah. 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 Watch it come to fruition. I like it. Oh, no, this is great. A lot of this uh, hopefully resonates with people who have business ideas too, because what you did, I mean, you had the, the MVP, you know, the minimal viable product and you did the pilot and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the one-on-one outreach and everything too. Uh, no, this is great. Cause it's what I've been trying to say too. And, and hopefully help uh, people kind of, you know, rethink what they, you know, perceive as business. Cause sometimes people think, you know, businesses are abhorrent and they're, you know, really, really bad and exploitative and, and, you know, they can be, that you know, it depends on who's running mm-hmm. it. But a lot of times for me, you know, a business and whether it's for profit or non, it's just a way to perpetuate uh, an idea type of thing. Yeah. So you had your idea first and then the nonprofit and the whole business idea came after it to sustain it. Uh, but hopefully, and, I, and I'll link to, uh, you got a video on the site, foodisfreeproject.org that talks about this too, but it was great to hear, you know, your side of it more uh, in depth too. And that it was more like if somebody has an idea or some kind of goal, maybe the business and all that stuff can come after that. I think sometimes people think, how can I make this a business? Right. When, when you were just like, okay, well, let's see what we can grow, you know, like <laughs> organically, fun intended. Right. Uh, and then it kind of went off from there. That's, um, yeah, that's, it. That's, that's, cool. that's interesting that you say that. Cause yeah, that, that kind of does remind me that when, as, as I was going through my thought process, I was thinking like, maybe if I started a, a, a business that could make the gardens, you know, that would help. But then I was realizing, you know, well, um, a lot of people, maybe they can't afford it or they're just not interested yet, or they don't know that they might be interested. So what like to, to offer them, you know, to offer them for free kind of, you know, although it was, definitely like the hor- most horrible business model you could think of. Um, it, you know, it, it, it was, that was actually part of my thought process, you know, uh, coming from that sales mentality. Um, and yeah, I mean, the nonprofit, all that, that all came way later. This was more just like an idea and, um, you know, no one, we didn't really know what was going to happen, you know, and, um, and we even actually put up, uh, one of my neighbors, uh, one of my friends who had moved onto our block, and uh, he was a he's a, a computer programmer, a Christian. He, you know, I was thinking like maybe we should start some kind of a online like Google group to meet the neighbors, and and you know, because he was very tech based, so I was trying to get his advice, and he he kind of flipped it around the other way and said like, what's the most non technical solution we could offer? Let's put up a let's put up a whiteboard. Um, next to the garden and just say, you know, do you want to learn more about growing food? Um, you know, leave your email and, um, and stay and, and we'll stay in touch. And um, so we put up this little whiteboard next to the garden and we had people who would be driving by, they'd st- stop their car, get out, put their email on. And um, it was a really cool, that was a really cool kind of part of it as well is realizing like you can kind of combine the, you know, um, you know, you can c- kind of combine ideas, you know, it doesn't have to be like just a physical idea. It doesn't have to be just an online idea. You can kind of like interweave these ideas together. Um, whatever works, you know, just plant, plant seeds and see what sprouts and like go with the flow and figure out, you know, what, what works in your area. You know, obviously we have different situations like New York city isn't going to have front yards. So it's, they're going to have to yeah. figure out a different way to do things, whether it's in the balconies or rooftops or, t- you know, use it, finding abandoned land or like, you know, growing vertically, uh, you know, so, you know, we're all, we're all kind of, but yeah, I mean, if we can learn what's working and what's not, we can kind of tailor those ideas um, to our own, you know, specific um, vision, whether it's about growing food or like you said, about any business idea or, you know, nonprofit idea and whatnot. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Cause you said like essentially knowing your community or, and, and your audience too. So it was kind of the, the combination of your own passion, but also your, your neighborhood. Cause you had what 19 out of, out of the 30 
uh, who are doing gardens after a few weeks. Like if, if you had tried maybe anything else, like here's this insurance sales, program, <laughs> like, would you get maybe like one email? Right. I mean, so it was, I think that's a really good point too, that if we, people want to start something, you know, you can have your own passion, but make sure that you're putting it in the right uh, community too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that if you, I guess I wouldn't, what I'm trying to say is that if somebody had failed, it might not have been, uh, an issue with the idea. It also might've been an issue with the community. Sure. Too. Yeah. They so go like, hand in hand. And yeah, I mean, the success of, of food is free is completely because of the community, you know, I mean, uh, otherwise it would have never expanded beyond that one first garden. It was all about like, it resonated with people and, um, and the idea kind of kept evolving and adapting to um, kind of the next uh, the next step. I mean, we were really kind of flying blind pretty much the whole time, um, you know, which in the, in the moment, I kind of like my sales mentality was, you know, trying to think up like, what's my goal? Like, I, I want to try to expand this to be like in every state within a year. And, you know, I, I, I honestly kind of, uh, you know, kind of had almost like too, maybe too big of a vision in the beginning. And I had to mm-hmm. kind of dial it back a bit and re- realize like, let's just do it on one block. Like, um, you know, because honestly it can seem really overwhelming to make a difference in the world or even in your own country or state or city or even in your whole neighborhood. Like, but like if yeah. you can make a difference on your own block or in your own like immediate community, you can see those um, those ripples, you can see those effects uh, much more, you know, immediately and kind of figure out what is resonating. And, and, you know, then you have a little bit of kind of feedback and a little bit of reassurance that like, okay, this is something that we can, you know, it's working, you know, maybe we're still making mistakes, but it's resonating. And so we can keep on moving forward and progressing. And, and uh, that, that lady, you know, walking by telling me, you know, like she got all her friends growing broccoli and I hadn't even met her until that moment. That was proof to me that like the ripples of our actions travel so much farther than our visible horizon. It's like, you know, we rarely does that feedback loop come all the way and we really understand, you know, what our actions truly inspire, you know, thinking about maybe like the butterfly effect and how thing rip, ripples are all connected. But but when you do things kind of more locally, you do see that feedback loop and, and you and then it's sort of a reassurance that like, OK, we're on the right path. Let's keep moving forward. Let's keep progressing. Yeah, no, that's great. Sometimes you just need that little pat on the back early on to be like, OK, yeah, going? That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's a great uh, communal feel. I love it. Um, so I live here in Los Angeles and I've been hearing of people wanting to leave California, particularly the Bay Area for places like Austin. Now, I know you lived there, but then left for North Carolina. I just want to know what spurred on that move. Uh, yeah, well, we so we, um, you know, the we aligned our block in the gardens and we started blogging about our experience and sharing it. And um, within about six months, I had actually gotten an email uh, from someone in Tasmania over on the other side of the planet. Um, and they were saying, like, would it be OK if I start a food is free project? And um, and I was like, whoa, whoa, that's amazing. Like, of course, you know, go for it. Take whatever idea you can and make it better and, you know, stay in touch. And that was the beginning of kind of open sourcing the idea. And, you know, so we started to have these other people in other cities that wanted to kind of, you know, kind of um, grow food, share it and whatever that may look like. Um, and so, it, you know, a few years, uh, a few years uh, went by and things were growing like this all kind of sparked in uh, the beginning of 2012 um, and around 2014, mid 2014 or so, um, the land that we were doing it all on the house, I was renting that house. So, um, you know, with everyone moving to Austin, like, you know, the real estate market was kind of crazy and uh, our, our landlord um told me that he was going to be putting the house up for sale and it was going to be a half a million dollars for this, like, you know, house that I was like, okay. So I was trying to figure out like, okay, what does the next uh, step look like? Um, You know, uh, how can we just keep on progressing and adapt and evolve? Um, We got offered a little bit of land to do some farming in the Ozark mountains in rural Arkansas outside Fayetteville. Um, So we kind of just, 
you know, went like wildflowers in the wind, we kind of just um, said like, let's go for it and let's try to like upscale the idea, try to grow a little bit more food and see, you know, how we can, you know, continue to evolve this idea. Um, and unfortunately that didn't, you know, we, we did, we did meet some amazing people in that area, uh, but unfortunately the, 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 the land situation just didn't pan out. And so we were kind of figuring out like what our next step looked like. And, um, we, we had, we had some friends in the Asheville area that had, you know, and I'd heard about kind of the, the food movement growing there. And, um, it was sort of just on our longer term radar, but we went ahead and just kind of decided to go for it. We figured, you know, what's the worst that could happen. And, um, we, we moved our little, uh, camper out there with our two pet pigs and our three cats and, um, <laughs> and just went for it. Really. It was kind of, you know, it wasn't, anything that we were like really thinking would happen uh, in, in the moment, but that's how we landed here. And um, we, we've been meeting amazing people here as well. And um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm starting to realize like, it doesn't really matter where you are. Like you will find like-minded people. If you, if you start, you know, doing, sharing your passion, sharing your ideas with others, you know, and uh, just start plugging in and, you know, you'll start connecting with those like-minded people and, um, folks with like, you know, similar visions and, uh, you know, form new collaborations and just kind of keep on kind of evolving. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those communities. So what do you hear from the, uh, sustainable gardening farming communities lately, like in times of food insecurity and supply chain issues, these seemingly never ending lockdowns, is it now kind of the best time to start a garden or I, what's the community kind of saying? I would definitely think I would, I would, I would agree that now is the best time to start a garden. I mean, I think, Every day is the best day to start a garden. Um, but, you know, I think um, I think, you know, we are seeing we are seeing more concerns about, um, you know, our food system. Um, you know, back when just first getting started, I was watching documentaries about our food system and trying to learn more about it because it's something I had, I had never really questioned. I had never really looked into much. Um, but realizing, you know, the way food is grown and the way we're treating our soils, you know, the way we're, um, you know, the, the way things have kind of gotten away from homegrown gardens to be more mass produced. Um, we've actually, you know, although in some sense we've liberated ourselves in with more free time, not having to grow our own food. What have we, what are the downsides to that? What are we missing out on that, you know, those connections, our hands in the soil, you know, the neighborly connections, those are things obviously that, growing your own food, you know, those do harbor those amazing relations. So, um, you know, I, I've been, uh, you know, seeing all these seed companies uh, that are all like sold out of seeds and back ordered. And, um, you know, to me, that's a sign that, uh, you know, even before the whole lockdown started, our local nursery, the seed rack was just like emptied out and um, the, all their seedlings were sold out. And um, then I started to look online at various seed companies and a lot of them were all back ordered and had like 10 times as many orders as usual. And that actually got me excited. I was thinking like, wow, you know, think of all the new gardens that are starting, starting, think of all the existing gardens that are expanding, um, you know, like this, uh, you know, this really is a catalyst um, to get people thinking about food and uh, thinking about resilience and thinking about community and what, what all those things look like moving into the future. Um, you know, uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's definitely, we're living in uncertain times, but I think that growing your own food, it, it's something it, I, I don't know. I, my mind goes back to my sales days saying like control what you can, you know, control the controllables and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, focusing on what we can control, which is, you know, growing, growing something, growing anything, you know, whether it's just like a pot with like one herb in it, or whether it's, um, you know, starting a farm or whether it's, you know, whatever it may be, um, you know, just going for it and focusing on what we can control and kind of taking back a little bit more of, of the power into our own hands to, to dictate what our reality looks like. Speaking of the, of the future, our, our second guest on the show is an accomplished rapper uh, from Baltimore named Greenspan, who started a mission called No Food Deserts, which, uh, can, you know, to lighten the mood with a dad joke is, is a nice. growing issue. Uh, do you see the future of Food is Free remaining open source and just this spreader of knowledge, or, or can it help address uh, particular issues? 
you know, as, as kind of a, you know, realigned mission or like, where, where do you, what do you see the future of food? Is um, food honestly, to me, it's, I feel like, um, it, the idea of food is free has grown so much far beyond uh, me that it's more of, uh, you know, it's more of a communal vision. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've learned so much from other people's food is free projects. I feel like than uh, than even from what I have done physically putting my hands in soil, you know, I mean, I, I never even thought to use the hashtag food is free until someone messaged us online saying like, y'all should use hashtags and put hashtag food is free. And I was like, Oh wow, that's a good idea. You know? And, and now if you search hashtag food is free, it's, you know, you can see all kinds of people around the world growing, sharing, setting up sharing tables, sharing their seeds, their seedlings, their harvests. Um, so I, I feel like it, you know, they're really, you know, I mean, I, I have lots of ideas of for things, but honestly, like, you know, with each community being unique, I think, we do need to tailor our visions to meet the needs of our community. And, um, you know, it's, we can, of course, I, you know, I think coming together, growing food and sharing it is the ultimate. That's kind of, I feel like the core principle of food is free because it's something that we, that's the uni, kind of unifying principle, but it really takes so many different, uh, you know, it, it takes so many different forms. Like right now food is free Albuquerque. Um, they've been throughout this whole lockdown, they've been, uh, building free garden beds and dropping them all off at people who uh, would like to host a garden, but all using social distancing. And they're, you know, they're finding creative ways to still get gardens out there and help people. And they got so much response from people who wanted to host a free garden. They got, I think they got like over 5,000 requests. So now they've had to switch it to like a raffle, wow. <laughs> um, kind of a lottery sort of style. But, um, you know, so they're finding, they're finding things that are working and I think you know I mean other people are seeing what they're doing and I think being inspired to to find creative solutions that that we can continue to you know plant seeds for even in in even when things you know are very uncertain and you know we're just taking it day by day there's always there's always a way um, to progress things but I think ultimately it really just comes down to the local communities around the world. Like whatever you want to do, whatever problems you see, you know, um, food is free can kind of be an, a uh, an avenue. It can kind of be, a um, you know, um, uh, an opportunity, like a vehicle for, for, tr for bringing that idea to life. And, um, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, again, it doesn't even have to, to be about food, but food is something that can get, get us all, you know, kind of united. And then we can start conversations from there, like what other collaborations might look like, um, like on our, you know, at our little headquarters in Austin, eventually we started a kind of expanded and started a compost sharing, uh, community compost program where neighbors would drop off their veggie scraps. And then we started a tool sharing. We turned our garage into kind of a tool sharing uh, situation. And um, so, you know, other things can kind of sprout out of that. It's sort of just like this initial, um, it's almost like food is free is almost like a blank canvas or an empty garden bed that you can then plant whatever seeds, you know, um, that you'd like to kind of bring to life your own vision. Yeah, so kind of related note, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but so, so Ron Finley, oh, yeah. the, the gangster He's amazing. out of LA, now has a, a master class that I'm seeing ads for, which is awesome. You've both done TED Talks, uh, and it was his that helped launch his mission. Where do you see the role for newer and less, you know, quote unquote, traditional outreach methods like TikTok or Snapchat, or maybe even Rise or Nextdoor, something like that? in spreading the mission of autonomy and food security? Like, have you reached peak growth on Facebook, do you think? Like, where is the future of, you know, food is free with respect to, you know, media and marketing? You know, what do you think is the, the next, you know, hashtag suggestion type of thing? Are, are you guys kind of paying attention to that? Or is it really just this uh, kind of wild wildfire that's just kind of... Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I I don't necessarily know know exactly the answer to that. Um, I mean, I personally am... Uh, uh, I'm not the best at uh, like Snapchat, TikTok. Those are kind of like things I still need to maybe look into how I can maybe utilize those tools. Um, but um, but yeah, I think I think really all of the above. I mean, I think 
I think, you know, each avenue, each, um, each kind of, uh, whether it's social media or, or any kind of uh, tool for connection, I think they all reach different people and they all, um, you know, like everything it, in permaculture, you know, I, we, we do realize like everything is connected. Um, and so I think uh, just using whatever tools you're good at, like a lot of people I know are concerned that they're not very good at social media. Like, I don't think I could start a food is free project if I'm not good at social media. But lots of food is free projects aren't even on social media. So it's, it's you know, you, we, we know that there are at least like 450 social, uh, food is free projects around the world. But those are just the ones that like I've been able to find through social media. So there's lots of people that are just yeah. making it happen whatever way they know how. Um, so I think just using whatever tools you have and, you know, um, sharing your vision with other people, because some people might not be very good at um, physical labor, but maybe they have really good, you know, skills when it comes to delivering messages and marketing, you know, so some people may have extra seeds, some people might have extra tools or extra time, you know, we all have our, you know, kind of skills or we all have unique uh, interests. So I think focusing on what we're good at and doing our best and then just sharing our idea with others, you'll start to unite with people that we all have these unique skills. And when we all come together, things, you know, blossom in a way that we could have never imagined, you know, the same way that a, a diverse ecosystem thrives compared to like a monoculture system. I don't think there's going to be like one solution that really, really does it all. I think it's just all about, you know, using all the tools and using, you know, finding the right tool for the right job. Well, that's awesome. Quick side note for, for listeners too, like per, uh, so permaculture is essentially permanent agriculture. So a lot of it is more, you know, how can you sustainably grow something, whether it's using, you know, native plants or different, you know, more water sensitive uh, methods like the, you know, the wicking bed, stuff like that. So this isn't necessarily targeted toward, permaculture uh aficionados so i just thought i'd double check on on that since it is you know we're talking about gardening trying to keep it high level but sometimes two people hear you know some of these new terms and they're they might be uh maybe intimidated sure. if, it, if it seems too esoteric so i just wanted to make sure that people knew uh, a little more yeah, of what yeah, we're talking definitely. about definitely um on a re- on a related note to social media or offline if you could sum up your followers what would you say most talk about with respect to food is free or what makes a supporter a supporter and the word of mouth advocate versus just a like, so to speak. Hmm. That's a good question as well. Um, you know, I feel like, um, I think, I think our, most of the supporters of food is free, I think are people who share the vision of, you know, um, growing food, sharing it to create a more resilient, more connected community. And, um, I think whether or not, you know, not everyone physically can be out in the garden, but I think holding a vision in your mind, you know, like every idea starts in our mind or, and every amazing idea was, you know, that, that did come to life. You know, it, we have to think back, like there was a time when it wasn't physically manifested in this world. Like it was just someone's idea, um, you know? And so I think we have to recognize there's so much power in, um, within ourselves to hold a vision in our mind and be open to looking out into the world at ways that vision can come to life. Um, you know, I, I think uh, when I look back at the evolution of food is free, I could have never imagined how things had unfolded, but I think being open um, to hearing people's ideas and, and people's input, you know, I think being open, uh, I think, is the open-minded is going to be the best way forward with any problem that we face as humanity. You know, I think as soon as we have decided that um, this is this one solution is the way forward, I think we're closing ourselves off to other possibilities. Awesome. Uh, so, are there any uh, shout-outs or anything uh, that you know we should be aware of? We haven't talked about. Uh, I think this is probably good cool. for kind of wrapping up. So, is there anything that you want people to to know about or anything um you know i mean you're uh i'd say you know if you're looking to plant a garden or if you're looking to plug into a community you're everyone is invited to be a part of food is free project um you know like i mentioned it's open source you're welcome to take the name food is free and tailor it to your community and take our logo take any idea make it better um you know, we have some videos on our website about how to build a wicking bed and 
uh, foodisfreeproject.org and um, you know, start a food is free project in your city or start any idea you have that you think might uplift those around you. Just, I say, just go for it. And no matter what that looks like, even if just taking the very first step and sharing your idea with other people, saying it out loud and t t taking it from a thought and putting it into a, even just the vibration of our voice, you know, that's, that is turning something from non-physical to a physical vibration. And from there, you know, you share the idea, you start sparking conversations and brainstorming how to get past obstacles. Um, you know, whether it's growing food or, or anything you're passionate about, I just encourage you to do it in a way where other people can see it. Uh, they can, you know, then be inspired to start their own ideas. And we all kind of you know, start these feedback loops of inspiration and innovation and, um, you know, healing that really the world kind of really needs right now. Absolutely agree. Like that's, that's where innovation comes from too, where you're just, you're collecting and analyzing and like, you just can't go down with, you know, with blinders on like a horse type of thing, you know, afraid of a little bug out of the corner of your eye type of thing. Like you have right. to be and like that reminds me too like i don't know why this came to my mind but like uh, one example i feel like is i uh, the where we were living in austin we were backed up to this kind of old drainage creek and the mosquitoes were just horrible there you know and i, I really i really hated mosquitoes but then one day i saw a mosquito pollinating one of my garden plants and i had no idea that they could even pollinate and it kind of just blew my mind thinking like wow something that i thought had no purpose in the world um maybe there's more to it like maybe i should open my mind to other things you know what else was i wrong about um you know how can i shift my focus from being uh, set in my beliefs to being open to other perspectives and learning from you know, not only the community, but from nature as well. Yeah, I had no idea either. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. Yeah, well, normally you think like, oh, what are they just, uh, you know, <laughs> food for bats and stuff like that? You know, it, it seems very, it's very singular. Like they don't have, you know, uh, uh, a, a role or any kind of feelings, uh, uh, you know, on their own, you know, and, and we could talk about, you know, personification uh, with, <laughs> with animals for, for days probably too and how, you know, we have outdated way of thinking and it's you know right humans only have intelligence but you know i yeah i didn't even know uh that was my background was landscaping and gardening and whatnot that I, well know, i i don't know maybe it was a very <laughs> rare thing you know maybe they were stepping in because other pollinators weren't showing up but i was like i was shocked <laughs> <laughs> but even so like it's if it's rare like it's still it's sometimes pollination if even if it's an idea right and let's you know let the wheels turn yeah. can be accidental right so maybe that's not their role but uh maybe they just happen to step on a flower and then who knows what the the, the mosquito effect, <laughs> effect of that was. <laughs> nice that's good oh man uh okay well, let's do a hum humble brag time so you did a mm -hmm. tedx talk a few years back about food is free entitled planting a revolution in your front yard which I'll link to uh, in our mini blog for folks to watch. Have you done anything like that before? Oh, I was nervous. I had, so can you take us there for, I, for the ambitious listener, like somebody who might want to start something, but they say, you know, oh, wow, I'm, I'm right. No, I, I had never done anything like that. I was incredibly nervous and it probably shows in my talk, but I, uh, I you know, I, I just, it was one other one of those situations where it was just like, just being open uh, to possibility, even if I fail miserably, like if you just inspire one other person, you know, that can keep that ripple moving forward. You know, I mean, I think just remembering that, that like you never know who you may inspire, even if it's just one person, like then that person can inspire someone else. And, um, you know, I say just, you know, when it's all said and done and we're on our deathbeds, like, what are we going to regret? We're going to, you know, we're going to regret the, the opportunities that we passed up, you know, like, let's just go for it. You know, what's the worst that could happen? Maybe we look like a fool, but I mean, if we wear our heart on our sleeve and do the best we can and share our ideas with others, I think that shines through. And I think, you know, people can tell, you know, they can, they pick up on, the intention and and you never know you just never know um what might come of it so i say just go for it and uh and just you know dance like nobody's watching <laughs> plant like i don't know there's probably some other analogy there plant like nobody's 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Harvesting. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll, we'll, we'll think of it. Uh, no, that's awesome. That, I, I probably reference it too much, but my favorite movie growing up was Grumpy nice. Old Men, a comedy with uh, Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. But there's a quote in there that says, the only uh, regrets yeah, we have in life are the we don't take. So uh, there's actually a lot of uh, gems. There you go. Of, exactly. You know, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's always, you know, being open to finding inspiration anywhere, you know. No, I love it. That's perfect. The perfect way to end it. It's that... Uh, that mosquito effect you never know, uh, exactly. you reach <laughs> no so so john thank you again uh loads and loads of uh you know truth wisdom uh inspiration nuggets in there uh so we'll have a little blog up for people to to read and uh, I'll, I'll link to food is free project and your videos and everything else to uh, get people inspired uh, to either start a garden yes. or at least a, a garden of ideas so uh thank you again for your time and uh, Thank you all so much for everything uh, y'all are doing to, uh, you know, just start sparking more ideas and conversations. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Awesome. It. Take well, care. Thanks, right. Take care, John. Bye.